Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Samzilla33, and welcome to Mix Up. And today we're going to be talking about a new card from Dark Explorers, Heatmore, and how to deal with it if you're playing Durant. And obviously, this card is one of the best ways to attack Durant if your deck isn't very good at it, it's Durant. So, yeah. But, as you might have guessed, there's a couple of things we're going to talk about this episode. First, we're going to talk about the decks that have been winning Battle Roads, and then we're going to be talking about a Battle Roads that I went to this week. So, without further ado, let's get to that right away. So, I hope you guys like the new background and style of these videos. It's a little more sleeker, a little more nicer, and I just think it's a little better overall. So, as per usual, before we get to the main topic of the day, we're going to take a look at the wins for Battle Roads recently. I got these win results from the Top Cut, great site, you can go check them out, the topcut.net, great site, but anyway. So as you can see, the results are interesting. Darkrai is very far in the lead with 46 wins, which is, if you couldn't tell, absolutely ridiculous compared to the runner-up, which is 15. In fact, if you combined all the other wins together, Darkrai is just under all of the other dex wins combined. So Darkrai, if you still didn't believe that it was good, well, everyone else in the world is going to punch you in the face if you still don't. Electric's in second with 15. Again, it's probably second best deck in the format, still consistent, still powerful, blah blah. And third is not mono fighting with CMT. And the first week of Battle Roads only had one win, which was pretty sad, but in this week it now has eight, so I guess it's kind of been a circle since since Darkrai has been popular, people have been playing mono fighting decks. Since mono fighting decks are popular, CMT is beating those, and then that's winning. And then people will start playing more Darkrai, and it's just this big circle of bleh. So I guess that's the reason why CMT is doing better these, this week. And next with six wins is our friend Mono Fighting Deck. Of course, always great choice. Next is Clan Clang with four. Our good friend Clan Clang is still clowning his way up the ladder. Definitely showing his way as one of the best decks right now. Next with four wins again is Troll. Troll seems to be doing pretty well, obviously. It's four. Same amount as Clan Clang. Just an annoying deck that can be pretty easy to play and pretty fun. Entei with two... yeah, Entei. Wasn't really expecting this to do very well, but apparently people have been using it and it's been doing good. And next it's our best buddy in the world, Boogie Legend, with two wins, which is really good considering there's probably only like one or two people playing it. So yeah, Boogie Legend, it's like two wins. And then everything else in this has one. There's one Durant, so obviously Durant Obviously, that person wasn't really that scared of heat more. There's one, the truth. Interesting thing there. One Empoleon. One Mew Vanillix, which is kind of interesting. I guess Vanillix just wanted to tell Asal Gore, who's boss, about paralyzing consistently. One Donphan Tornadus. One Taraki Any Electric. And Donphan Mewtwo. With one again. So, quite a lot of interesting wins. A lot of interesting decks. Uh, and a lot. Of Darkrai, that is definitely true. A lot, a lot of Darkrai. So now that we've taken a look at those very interesting Battle Roads results, let's talk about the card of the day, which is Heatmore. Heatmore is basically a card designed specifically to annihilate Durant. There is no other purpose for this card. It's kind of like Cryogonal, but much, much better. He's very splashable compared to Karaoganal. And also he's targeting a better deck other than Don Fan, which isn't too popular and wasn't popular when Karaoganal came out. Well, to an extent. But yeah, as you can see, his first attack, Hot Lick for one Carlos, does 10 damage. It says that the defending Pokemon is Durant. It does 50 more, which you basically can't avoid that unless you go to ridiculous lengths. And by ridiculous lengths, I mean, two special medals, an Eviate Light, and a Defender, and that's only a surviving one attack. So obviously, that is not going to be something 
awesome. That is going to be very annoying, in fact. Since it can, you know, kill you in one hit every single time. This card is definitely a card you can tech into almost every deck if you want a counter to Durant. I mean, there's some decks that if you already have a good matchup against Durant anyway, you might not want to tech it. Like uh, Electric and Dark Ride probably don't need this card, but decks like CMT and some of the slower decks that really don't like Durant should definitely consider trying out this card and see if it ruins your consistency or not or whatever. However, unlike Cryogonal, he more basically has no other purpose in any way at all. I mean, you can use a second attack, but really there's no w situation you should ever be using fire breathing in a legit battle, because it doesn't even do that much damage. And yeah, basic, so really, again, Cryogonal can, you know, be decent, like if you're fighting a fire deck, you can use that to do 60 if you're fighting Terrakian, you can 2 hit KO that. But Heatmore does 10 damage to everything, or 20 if there's weakness, and 50 to 70 with second attack if you can bother to build that up. I mean, with Cryogonal, you could build them up one turn. Heatmore, there's really nothing you can do to build them up in one turn just because his energy cost is one fire and two Carlos so it's not going to be using his second attack so if you are using a Durant deck and your area is filled with those people who would be teching this card in then you're going to have a world of hurt with this card definitely going to probably result to going 0-4 battle roads or whatever which is probably almost over by the time you're watching this so if you're really still worried about this card there's just a couple situations that you can avoid it. First is if you discard Heatmore before they're able to get it. But they probably won't come to that situation because they can just use Super Rod or whatever to get it back. And they still probably have other attackers to take it out while they're getting their Heatmore. Or you could just hope it's Prize. That's also a helpful thing to have. But again, it could always be... That situation might not come very often. But you could take the more extreme out and try to counter Heatmore. Now, obviously, if they if they're using Heatmore, they're probably not going to want anything else on the bench. So if they have a uh, Electric on the bench, or I'm not saying they would hit, since they would, shouldn't be having Heatmore and Electric deck. But say they have Electric, they could put a Tyro involved into Electric on the bench. They probably shouldn't do that because it's just catcher bait. You can have the opportunity to kill Heatmore before it actually causes too much damage, and you can just, you know, win the game by getting rid of all the basics. There's a few cards I've picked out that can actually succeed at killing Heatmore in one or two hits. The first is one I've already talked about in my Typhlosions as, as a counter to Typhlosion, which is Basculin. If you don't remember what that does, basically for one water and two Carlos, it does 80 damage, and then you flip two coins at both the tails, it takes 80 damage, and since it has 80 HP, it will die or get KO'd. But obviously that kills Heatmore one hit. Since it only has 90 HP, and it has weakness since it's a water Pokemon. If you can knock that out, then you're golden. But you probably should tech in double Carlos as well, because if they're building up in three turns, they're probably going to realize, oh shoot! Oh no, they're building up uh, Basculin, I should search for basic. But, if they did double Carlos, they have less time to react to that. So yeah. And the next one is Articuno from Next Destinies. It basically does the same job of killing him one one hit with the same amount of energy cost but it's also better in other matchups because it can stall with its first attack and it can still kill Typhlosion with the second attack but that takes a little longer to build up and probably not going to be able to kill Typhlosion in while building up for three turns before they get captured and start discarding your energy and then everything will just suck. Last one is Gyarados from Heart Gold Soul Silver. Yeah remember this guy? He's not really a secret rare I mean he's the 123rd of the set but I mean, it's just like this random thing tacked on after the energy. Um, I don't even know how... Like, if, if you bought booster boxes back then, I'd love to know the pull rate of one of those red Gyaradoses, because it just seems like such an odd conclusion that said, especially since it already has a secret rare. But anyway, this one uh, definitely has some faults, and it has some strengths compared to the other ones. First of all, it's a stage one, so that's a big problem. Second of all, it, uh, it can't always kill Heatmore because it has a flip if you don't have Thrash it does 30 damage for a Carlos and you flip a coin and if Heads it does 20 more damage and if Tails it does 20 to itself so it can't always knock out Heatmore but if you're using Black Belt in your deck then you can I don't know if you're variant of 
during it does run black belt. Mine personally does not. I don't run it anymore. But when I did run it, it did not run black belt. But the, obviously the, the catch with Gyarados is that you don't have to run double colorless energy if you wanted to succeed at killing them. You just need to wait a turn for to evolve the Magikarp into Gyarados. Hopefully, they won't be able to put down something, attach to it, retreat, catch her up, the Magikarp, and kill it. I mean, the problem you there's like situations with Tornadus, EX or whatever, but or Shaman and Switch, but whatever. Uh, Red Gyarados could be another option, but it's also a lot clunkier. And another thing, it also has three retreat costs, which makes it more catcher bait if they do, do decide to put out a third basic. So Gyarados is still an option, but I definitely don't recommend it over the other two, especially Basculin. So, that's heap more in a nutshell for you. If you're still playing Durant, even with this format of Dark Rye, Dark Rye, Dark Rye, pray to God for you that you don't run into any heap mores in your tournament, because guarantee you that's going to be an auto loss. So, now that we're done with the card of the day, let's talk about Battle Rose this third week. If you didn't know, I'm actually trying a new deck for, for this tournament, if you couldn't guess from the last two videos. And it is Grodny X with Terrakion and Landorus. And yeah, I used this uh, battle video a couple weeks ago, so you can go check that out if you want to see the deck in action. But um, yeah, the deck in testing, it seems pretty good. It's definitely more tested, more well built than my electric deck, so I was very eager to start playing this game. So yeah, I go there, and uh, I should just point this out now that this tournament was probably the worst out of all of them so far. I know it's hard to say, it's hard to even comprehend, but it's true. This was probably the worst tournament I've ever been to. Yeah, it, it, it was kind of lame. But anyway, the first lame thing about it was that there's only five seniors, so we're mixing with the Masters. Yay, time for losing! Uh, the first round, I'm up against a senior with a Dark Rye and Tornado deck. Uh, and here I thought of that no senior in the world was able to afford three plus Dark Rye and two or three Tornadus. So, yeah, this round, uh, definitely, probably, definitely, probably, probably, definitely, one of the most fun games of the day. Actually, yeah, probably the most fun game of the day. Uh, for the most part, he uses Mewtwo EX, and I am using Terrakion this match since it can KO his Darkrai in one hit, and without it doesn't have to use a plus power to take out the Tornado CX, unlike Groudon. So, yeah, a lot of matchups use Terrakion. Cause that's why I'm thinking of running higher copies in it, of it in the future, but anyway, uh, I use most of the match. He gets a lot of energy on his Mewtwo by the end, and. Third lame thing about the tournament, or is this the second? Okay, I, I think it's the second. I make a pretty stupid misplay here. My Terrakion has two energies on it, it just used Retaliate. And on my turn, I attach it to the bench to Pokemon, just Landorus, just to make sure it can attack, and then I realize, oh, I need to be able to attack this turn. So I have to switch and try to use a Bone and Harvest to try to attack, but he has another energy for his Mewtwo to be able to KO me. So then I just basically kind of go downhill from there. I'm about to KO his Mewtwo when he switches it, Shaman's, and then Super scoops up the Mewtwo, so yeah, that match ends in a loss. I probably would have been able to win if I had just attached the right freaking Pokemon. <sighs> I am just so stupid sometimes. I really, I really need to do something about that. It's really hurting my player skills. Not that I have much skills to begin with. But anyway... So yeah, I'm one. I'm 0-1, and, and next round I'm up against a newbie deck with Groudon EX and I believe Entei EX. This match, I seem to have a shortage of energies, but it doesn't even matter because I just swarm his field and annihilate him. So, not much to say about that. Yeah, and so I'm 1-1. One and, one. and the next round I'm up against probably the worst possible matchup I could possibly think of: Empoleon and Vileplume. And you can probably see, and also has a Terrakion and Darkrai in it. Now, Darkrai is good. I would like to fight Darkrai. 
but rival Terrakians aren't fantastic since they can one or er, since they can two a KO my Groudon and I don't run Eviolite, so I can't protect against that. I do run Super Scoop up though. But anyway. Uh Empoleon is annoying because it can often one hit KO my Groudon, if not two hit KO it for two prizes. And Vileplume is just absolute awful because it makes half of my entire deck complete waste of space since it's a bunch of trainers so you can probably guess where this match is going uh yeah basically all that happens is he you knows my there's no there's really no point about talking about this game he gets vapum up pretty quickly i don't really take too many prizes i knock out one of his empoleons i knock out a uh, smiracle but that's about it he just swarms my health field and that's game pretty lame one and before round four starts i notice on the score sheet that I, it says I am 03 instead of 1 2. So I go talk to the tournament organizer, say, hey, you know, I'm at, uh, I'm at 03. I should have been at uh, 1 1 last round. And turns out that she couldn't really fix it. So I'm stuck at uh, 0 3. And I have to get two more wins to even have a chance of getting a victory cup. So that's like the lamest part about the whole tournament. Uh, I really. If I taught if I had said something about it earlier, then maybe we could have done something about it. But anyway, next round I'm up against a Reshiflodon deck, and this this is oh, by the way the last round was a master, the second round was a senior, and this round is also a master. And this is actually apparently his very first tournament. So if you're watching, that's uh, awesome for you. If you had fun at your very first tournament. And if there's a Rush Flosion, Rush Flosion's an interesting matchup because uh, if you use Afterburner, you set up Growl and X's Giant Claw attack for more KOing fun. But he seems to deny me prizes a lot by using Switch and Max Potion and all this stuff to deny me prizes. And again, I'm using Turakian for this matchup for the most part. I don't want him to be getting one prize off my Tornadus every turn or two prize off my Groudon every other turn. So Trikeon's the best one to use in this matchup. Unless they already have two damage counters on them, which they didn't for the most part. So it's just kind of a standard match that I start losing the prize race and it goes to him and so yeah. Uh, I would be one three, but apparently I'm 0-4. Wah wah And guess what the fifth round is? It's a bye! What the Uh, stupid buys. So yeah, I finish with one and four, one being a buy, and one of those losses being a miscounted loss. So the tournament, I get fifth out of five. Isn't that just awesome? And she gives me the tournament organizer gives me a pity pack for miscounting it. So I guess that's nice. And I pull junk, of course. And yeah, it's a tournament, probably the lamest tournament I have ever been to in my entire life. Sniffle. But, there was one thing about this tournament that I haven't mentioned yet that was awesome. I believe it was during my bye, but when the fifth round was still going on, uh, someone came up to me. Uh, I think he was going to organize a trade in the first place, and he... Apparently he recognized me, and I'm thinking... This is a master, by the way, and I'm thinking, uh, from where? And he, he recalled seeing me on a YouTube video. So, that, that was pretty cool. I've never been recognized specifically for my YouTube videos before. So, that was definitely very awesome to have some one of, a person who saw my video uh, recognize me. Uh, he, he didn't remember what video it was. He, he, it seemed like it was... He seemed to be very hinting at it being my video. He said I was doing a deck analysis and a battle roads report, so he he, he never fully really remembered the name, even if I even after I said what it was called, mix up. So yeah, it might not. M there's a chance it might not be that, but I'm pretty sure it is. So yay! So that's my lamest tournament ever report. I hope you enjoyed because I didn't stop
And again, if you for some reason want to know my list, then, well, here we go. It's got two Grad on EX, one Full Art, and one regular. I actually had two Full Arts at the tournament, but I traded one away. Two Terrakian. Again, I probably should have more. I will be adding more soon. Three Landris. Uh, the reason I have a lot of these is so you can get a good... So it's more likely you'll start with him. Uh, one Shaman. Four Drunk Arm. Four Catcher. Just look at those cheap prizes. Two Dual Ball. Three Ultra Ball. So you can discard. Energies for Landris is Abundant Harvest easier. Two Lost Movers for those Tornadus. Two Switch. Two super scoop up and they're both reverse. Two. Two plus power. Four EXP share because if you don't run four then you're dense. One rocky helmet. Two random receivers. Four juniper. Two no what not two. Four oaks. Three and a lot of ends in reverse. And 12 fighting energy. So, this list will definitely change up a little bit by the next tournament. But for now, that's my list. And I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. I just hope my tournament pro wasn't too negative. Because there's several reasons for it to be negative. I mean, I did bad. But anyway, next week, we'll be talking about a certain card that is coming out of Dark Explorers that I think. May may be a little not worthy of even be releasing because it's awful, awful, awful. It should not even exist ever at all. There should be no situation where this card should exist. What card is that? Find out next time. Later.